Good morning everyone. So in this video we're going to be working with covalent compounds. We're going to be talking about what a covalent compound is, how we go about naming compounds, and last writing formulas based off their names. So covalent compounds as the basic definition here is a compounds are formed due to a sharing of electrons between two nonmetals. Now the sharing of electrons can also be referred to as a covalent bond. Covalent bonds only form between nonmetals. And so now those elements can be the same or they can be different elements. But just in case anybody has forgotten, the nonmetals are found on the periodic table and they are found on the right side of the staircase. Now, the bulk of what we're going to be looking at in terms of what we work with are going to be found in this shaded area here. So, it's not to say you couldn't work with something else from, uh, from the other elements, but the bulk of what we see come from what's in this shaded area. So, uh, we'll just start off with a, a very common example. So h2o now h2o we know it as water that's the common name for it so everybody calls h2o water but there is a technical name for it now what we do is we have to look at how many elements there are and then each element has its own prefix so when in the formula there are two hydrogens and so when we look at the right hand side over here we look at this table all right we'll find that there is a prefix for two which is called di now the way you go about naming this is that you put the prefix in front of the element so in this case it'd be dihydrogen and then when you look at the oxygen there's one oxygen and so with well there only be one oxygen the prefix for that is mono so that would be monoxide all right so so in this example here, water is actually, the technical name is dihydrogen monoxide. So one of the things we're going to have to understand is that when we work with covalent compounds, we have to use the prefixes. The prefixes helps us to understand in that formula how many hydrogens there are and how many oxygens there are. So when I look at this and I say, okay, we have dihydrogen monoxide present, in my mind I see dihydrogen means that there are two hydrogens and then monoxide which is one oxygen so always make sure that you're using prefixes for covalent compounds we don't use prefix for for any ionic compounds all right so the the discussion with ionic compounds in the other video we only use Roman numerals for transition metals and we never really specify how many of the elements are present because the charges dictate that. In a covalent compound, there are no charges that I have to be concerned with. So what we have to have is a system to where it helps us to understand how many elements are present, not based off the charge, but based off the compound itself as being uh, covalent compounds. So you have to be really careful in this and don't mix the two together. It's real easy to get this prefix mixed in with the ionic compounds. You don't need prefixes for ionic compounds, but you do need prefixes for covalent compounds. So keep that in the back of your head as you're working and you're studying over the next few weeks. So let's look at some more examples here. The best thing to do in this type of situation is to look at examples. So we're going to look at another one. All right, so this is a common one, CO2. So for more or less, we just have to look at, you know, how many elements there are. In this particular case, we have one carbon and two oxygens. Now, uh, in the previous example, we talked about putting the mono in front. You only use the mono if the second element has one, high, one element. Or, and so in this particular case, the first element is carbon and there's only one carbon. We don't have to put mono in front of that. All right, this is the one time where you don't have to use mono. So this is carbon dihydrogen. 
oxide. All right, so so the dioxide tells you that you have two oxygens, and then just stating the carbon, there are no prefixes in front, already automatically represents one carbon. So looking at another one, CO, well, this one is carbon monoxide. So we just looked at an example where we have carbon monoxide and we can see that we have one carbon and one oxygen thus the prefix used for monoxide tells that so what if we have a, a formula or what if we want to write a formula from the name so let's say we have tetra carbon octahydride now this is not a real compound it's just a made up compound but it's an example so tetracarbon so tetra is four that means we have four carbons and then octahydride well that would hydride is hydrogen and that means that we have eight hydrogens so so this is a good example of where we have a, a the name and we write the formula from it so and you can do this many different ways. So just doing a couple here, white, we'll just do a couple that are sort of fast. So so there, here we have S2I6. So this is disulfur uh, hexa iodide. Now one thing I didn't mention is that you still have to end the ending of the second element with IDE. You still have to do that in this case. You can't just say hexa iodine. You have to say hexa iodide. So all these examples include the IDE on the ending of the name. So another one, which would be PCO3. All right, so this would be phosphorus trichloride. All right, so uh, let's do one more here. Let's do nitrogen diphosphide. All right, so this would be NP2. Now, this is a fake compound. It's just an example for right now. So, so just a little recap from this so remember covalent compounds happen to occur with two different non-metals it could be the same uh, now there are seven diatomic molecules so hydrogen nitrogen oxygen fluorine chlorine bromine and then iodine now these are all just diatomic elements they do not need prefixes so when we name these compounds here these are different and I'll, I'll bring this up for that reason because it's easy to say dihydrogen well there are no other elements so it's just hydrogen nitrogen oxygen fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine okay so these are just named based off their element names but when we have two or more non-metals like we do like we've seen here then we use the prefix as as we observed so all these uh, these seven are called diatomic uh, molecules and they are named by their element symbol all right so so that's it for this video i hope you guys have learned and, and you understand a little bit more about how to name covalent compounds so we'll see you in the next one